Channel 12, 13, and 11. So what were you, what were your what were your thoughts on uh, on that Camacho documentary? I mean, like it's a like with me, it, the stories are always kind of like every fighter has a good story, right? So when you put money behind, we could we could find the most journeyman two and ten <laughs> fighter, but if you get good cameras and you love the sport or you love hearing a good story. As long as there's something you get out of it, every story is going to be good. And I say all that to say Camacho was always a sensational personality. He had one of the best chins in boxing. There's a story to be had there. For me, Camacho was kind of bittersweet because I grew up kind of looking up to Ray Leonard, my grandpa and all that. So it's hard, even though I can separate myself, when you're a young man, it's hard to change the memory you have. And watching that documentary brings back a lot of my grandpa crying because Ray Leonard didn't have it no more. So that's kind of what I what I think when I see that. And that's just me being a human being. It's not discounting Camacho, but it's discounting. It's just me being honest about my relationship with boxing was growing up. That's who my grandfather didn't like because he thought so much of Leonard. Yeah, but to be fair, Leonard was what, 146 at that time? Well, yeah, but when you're a kid, you don't know it. You just see, you see yeah. like superhero crying, and you're just you were you believe that that was. You, I had a VHS tape that said "Best Boxers in the World," and it had Ray Leonard, Mike Tyson, Ray Robinson, and Marvin Hagler, and it was a one hour and thirty minute. Do you remember SLP? So you could get an SP yeah. tape or an SLP, and it was a four hour tape, but it was real bad quality. But you could watch the fights. It was YouTube back in the day. And that was growing up. I was a big Chavez fan, being Mexican. So the whole Puerto Rican versus Mexican, we had that aspect to it. So I was, I was uh, raised to hate him because he was the enemy. Uh, it wasn't until later till I got to appreciate what he was, what what he, who he was, what he did in the ring, and uh, the excitement that he brought. Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing the documentary. But what were you, what were your thoughts on it, D? Uh, like you said, with child, child, listen, man, Hector Camacho, Hector Camacho was a, was a talented, uh, extremely gifted, talented fighter and, and pretty much, and pretty much had the, uh, the star, star power and salesmanship, you know, like him or not, uh, as a kid. And and I think Luke brought it up as a kid. You have memories, and and one of my one of my boxing memories is uh, rooting for Boom Boom Mancini. And and if I'm gonna pretend it wasn't because he was another white guy, I'm gonna be lying to you. So though I'm not Italian, uh, he was the white guy, right? And so I remember uh, n- not caring about. Camacho and and wanting a wanting a blue collar worker, you know. I, I don't think a lot of people understand how huge a star Boom Boom Mancini was at one time in this country. There was there was there was rock and roll records written about this guy, and and you know, uh, so of course I was anti Camacho when when he fought Mancini, but then all that went away when when he fought. Uh, Ray Leonard, because I'm the anti Ray Leonard guy, and and so yeah, he was 140 years old, and Camacho was 130, so it don't fucking matter. <laughs> I was loving the ass whooping, but I understand, I understand the the historical in the in the in the uh, the impact it had how Ray lost that fight. Now I ain't gonna pretend Camacho versus Ray Leonard at, at fucking welterweight would have been something it wasn't in their primes, but uh that that documentary just showed like how watching that documentary, how the fuck you thought his story was gonna end. That was exactly how it was gonna end, you know, and he was a wild guy, but then, you know, part of that is what makes a, a fighter a great fighter, you know, coming from the have nots and and you know and come you know, that's why the Eastern Europeans have taken over boxing because they're coming from the broke down uh USSR and these was basically 
ghettos now and and mob controlled places and shit. These guys are starving, bro, with the, the communism and shit. Now they took over by so it's the next people. And 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 Camacho was a ghetto guy, man, Spanish Harlem from the projects, man. He was bound to be and then and then gifted on top of that. So I think those guys, I think he belongs in the Hall of Fame. I think uh it was a fun ride. I hate to see how it ended. And we had his son on a podcast and, and we talked about his dad and how it was uh coming up with a, a father like that and the pressure he was under. But it's sad, it's a sad watching his mother's, you know, heartbreak, it was it was terrible, man. Anybody with a a little bit of compassion could understand how she was feeling, man. And and, and I hated to see him go out like that. I remember when he died and they said he was shot, I was like, damn. Oh, that that that's how that story is, man. Uh, but it was a good documentary. I tell anybody who was a fan or a box. Hell, if you ain't a boxing fan, it's a good documentary. Yeah, you know? it's just a good. Like my thing is, as a fan of boxing, I always want to get the old old time stories that the fights are hard to watch. I want to. I want them to bust through those documentaries first. Let's get the Ezra Charles one, the one where I don't really fully understand who he was. Let's preserve some of those. Let's get Ezra Charles. There's enough Joe Lewis, but like, let's get those ones and then we can go through the uh, because we got to preserve the like a, a documentary I'd like to see would be Floyd Sleepy Patterson mm. because I watched the mm. tape, but I don't really get who he was, you know, and I think that would be.